Oh my goodness, James Harden has suffered a setback with his hamstring and is expected to return around the NBA playoffs. Now, one, if you are a fantasy owner of James Harden, which thankfully I'm not, you have to be absolutely devastated right now. I mean, you cannot replace James Harden in fantasy. This is a guy that's averaging a 28-point triple-double since let's say, what, March 12th, 13th? I mean, he's just been absolutely ridiculous. And right now, apparently things aren't going right with his hamstring. You know, it's a really delicate muscle. Harden played on it just four minutes against, what was it, the... I don't remember who they were playing. The Heat, was it? Uh, the Knicks, I think, it was, I think it was the... I don't remember who it was exactly, but all I know is that he played just four minutes. He felt something wasn't right. And when James Harden pulls himself from a game, it's not to be taken duly noted in the sense like you don't mess around if james harden says that so he comes out and it looked like harden was going to return this week but now no he's not he's actually going to be returning in a month just around the nba playoffs so first of all fantasy will be over i mean well maybe magically you'll get harden in the championship if you make it but if you lose james harden you're probably not winning the championship i mean you could i, I don't know that but probably not lucky right so, of course, the Nets have only played seven games with Harden, Durant, and Kyrie on the court together. I'm very concerned for this Brooklyn Nets team heading around the playoff time. I know a lot of Nets fans are saying that, look, I know this team hasn't really played together, but once it's finally healthy, we'll be good to go. And I, I just don't buy that, man. I really don't think that this Nets team, without some chemistry, at least on the fly, has a chance to win a championship. But if they can have two of the big three, I think they can definitely make a run and hell even get to the finals but without all three of them healthy and with chemistry i mean how is this team going to beat the lakers the lakers defensively looked incredible obviously the last time these two teams met and that wasn't even a fully healthy lakers team not even i mean they were missing anthony davis and lebron james we'll just get that out of the way but again it is what it is um in other news with that so it looks like harden had another mri he's going to be out indefinitely just not good news man the nets are going to be cautious with harden he's 31 He's their, not their, necessarily a franchise player, but he's one of their franchise players. I mean, when you have Kevin Durant on the roster, it's hard to say that someone's a franchise player over him. But yeah, it looks like his return is going to come closer to the start of the playoffs in a month. And just so you guys know, today is April 20th. So if he misses literally a month, I mean, that's just right in time for the playoffs, man. And also when he comes back, they're going to have to take it slowly because it's a hamstring. This is an injury that can take months to heal. So I think it's the right decision to just sit hard out for the rest of the regular season, but there are consequences to it. The first one being not being able to build chemistry. The second one being Kevin Durant is injured as well. So now it's just up to Kyrie Irving, who we're going to get into later on. But it's next man up with this Nets team, man. I know a lot of people were saying without Harden, this, this team is not going to be able to win a lot of games. And I'm not buying that. Kyrie Irving on any team is going to be able to win games. You also have Joe Harris, Landry Shamit. Now without Harden, you're going to see guys like, of course, TLC and... Chioza, of course, get an opportunity. I mean, he's been hurt, but Mike James will probably get signed. I mean, that's why the Nets, I'd imagine, have to be looking at him because they're trying to get another guard. But, I mean, whether or not you think Mike James is a good pickup, I mean, he can ball, there's no question. I personally am not big on the signing, but, I mean, they just need someone that can score and that, again, as a veteran, I mean, he's 30 years old. He played in Russia, of course, and was one of the best Europe players, actually, in the entire in the entire country. I mean, being real with you guys, um, well, I guess continent, but you guys know what I mean, right? So... I mean, honestly, we'll see what happens. I'll try to keep you guys updated to the best of my capability. This is really devastating news. You also have to remember that the Nets are competing for the number one seed. Not that it really matters, but I'd rather have a game seven on my own home court in the Barclays Center in Brooklyn than go to Philadelphia. Because if you go to Philadelphia with fans in the arena, they're going to be roaring. Ben Simmons, Joel Embiid, all these guys play better at home. I mean, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I'm going to assume that a healthy Sixers roster is going to play better at home. They're going to want to defend their own home court. Obviously, they've been knocked out in the first and then the second round the past couple of years they they were in the concert finals they lost in that devastating Kawhi buzzer beater a couple of years ago they're looking for vengeance honestly man and for for Harden he's just he's had such an incredible season he had this really remarkable run of triple doubles and leading his team to wins I mean the Nets are under 500 without him and then with him they're they're ridiculously good so it's safe to say that James Harden any chance that he had to win MVP is over not that it really matters I mean he already has an MVP what Harden needs is a ring but at the same time, a lot of people had James Harden number two in MVP. I mean, for example, Frank Isola, who covers the Nets, of course. He does the, I believe he does the posts in the after games. He's obviously writes and stuff. I mean, I've, I've known him for a while. I remember him when he was doing the Knicks. But what he said was that between 
the MVP race right now, and he has a vote. This is why this is relevant. He has a vote. He, vo he voted for Giannis over Harden in 2019. But he said this season it was between Jokic and Harden, and that hadn't been decided. But, I mean, now there's just no doubt in my mind that Nikola Jokic is going to win MVP. And honestly, I'm, my bias side of me wants to complain about it. But at the end of the day, like, how can we? I mean, he's dropping triple doubles. He scored 47 what last night. His team is the fifth seed in, the, in a tough West. He's doing it without Murray. I mean, his team has been banged up. So I'd want to step here and say that Jokic isn't the MVP and that Joel Embiid's the MVP. And Joel Embiid still has a chance. Like, first of all, Joel Embiid's a significantly better defender. But at the same time, I mean, he hasn't played. He obviously had that injury for a couple of weeks. Jokic has played in, I think Jokic has played in every game. I wouldn't be surprised if he's played in every game. He's super efficient. He shoots the three ball. He's getting rebounds. He is basically a seven foot point guard. I mean, Jokic should, should be the MVP. There's just, there's no doubt in my mind. And he deserves it. I mean, if Jokic isn't the MVP, then, then what is like, right? So, but I mean, anyways, uh, I will say for Nets fans, man, hang your hang your heads up man like keep your heads up in the air man for real don't don't get like disappointed because Landry Shamit has been playing the best basketball of his career he's shooting 45 percent from three the, this month every single month it's gone up it's only up from here i'm really devastated because i wasn't able to pick up Landry Shamit in fantasy and the reason why i didn't pick him up is because i didn't have a player to drop until 3 a.m and by the time i woke up at like i think it was like 80 or 7 a.m or something for me to check he had already been picked up so one thing about Shamit though for fantasy, I mean, he doesn't provide anything besides scoring and, and efficiency, so he's not going to get rebounds or assists. I mean, can he pull off five assists and five rebounds tonight? Absolutely, but consistently, there's just no way he's going to do that. I mean, the, the biggest benefit from fantasy, I know this is fantasy, so if you don't play fantasy, you can just click off being real, or you can listen if you want to learn and hear it, but I'd say the biggest benefit to Harden missing the next month is actually in my favor because I have Jeff Green, I have Kyrie Irving, and I have DeAndre Jordan on my fantasy team. Now, DeAndre Jordan doesn't benefit at all from this. If anything, he might actually benefit less because Harden would, I mean, I don't know. It, you could, we could debate that. I'd say 100% Kyrie Irving, who I have as one of my best fantasy players, benefits from this. I mean, there's no question. Kyrie Irving, I mean, in, in the sense of playing efficient basketball and winning basketball doesn't, doesn't benefit, but from fantasy, he's gonna have the ball in his hands. He's gonna have those typical 12 assists, 30 point games like those Trey Young type games. We know Kyrie grabs rebounds. So yeah, Kyrie's gonna benefit from this. Landry Shamit, Joe Harris is gonna benefit from this. Some other role players are as well. But I mean, I'd say that the Nets big men definitely don't benefit from this because they're getting less open looks. They're obviously the tension's always gonna be on Harden. So when Harden's playing, the focus is on him. But when he's not playing, now there's actually more focus on you, right? So teams are gonna force the Nets actually to go one on one against them and We'll see what happens. I mean, there's a lot of skeptics, a lot of critics saying that the Nets are actually easier to defend when the big three is playing because the ball's not moving and all that. I, I think that's completely absurd and ridiculous. If the Nets, if injuries didn't exist, if you tell me right now that James Harden, Kyrie, and Durant on a basketball court would be easier to defend than just maybe two of them or one, that's probably the most idiotic thing that I've ever heard in my life. But we'll see what happens, man. Let's see if Kyrie Irving has an, a late MVP pushing him. Like, I'm not even kidding. If Kyrie Irving plays in every game this season, and let's say they lose like two games and he's averaging 30 on 50, 40, 90, 10 assist, maybe like a steal and a half a game. I mean, he could win MVP. Like, I mean, I know it's far-fetched, but it's really not. I mean, Kyrie Irving's having an MVP type season. He just has missed games. When he's on the court, he's playing at an MVP level. I mean, there's no one really playing at a better level than Kyrie Irving when he's on the court. But the problem is he's usually not on the court, whether it be to personal reasons or an injury. But hey, Kyrie Irving, I'm challenging you right now, man. I want to see you play the best basketball of your career. It's your boy Swaggy signing out, guys. Peace.